It's Friday the 18th of February 2011 and this is Photo Walkthrough episode number 141, a Lightroom 3 quick tip. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. On today's show we've got a Lightroom 3 quick tip in two parts. Today we're going to be talking about the picture packages feature of Lightroom which is especially useful if you're an event photographer and you're producing prints at the event to sell to the customers at their tables. You're going to love this feature of Lightroom. This tip was originally produced for tipscroll.com and uh, I'm a big fan of tipscroll.com. They do some fantastic video tutorials over there. If you like what we do here at Photo Walkthrough you should should definitely head over to tipscroll.com and take a look there as well. I'm doing a couple of quick videos here and there for them just because I love those guys and I want to be involved. Okay let's get started with today's Lightroom 3 quick tip tutorial. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the picture package option in Lightroom 3 and particularly trying to show you how you might use it if you're an event photographer and you're wanting to sell packages of pictures to the people that you're taking photographs of at an event. So you can see I've got some pictures here that I took at a recent wedding. That's what we're going to be working with today. So let's jump over into the print module and I'm going to just make myself a little bit of space by closing down some of these side panels just so that we can see what we're doing a little larger and uh, um, I'll keep the film strip at the bottom there might just make it a bit smaller remember by the way you can turn on and off the tool buttons the toolbar buttons at the bottom of the main window by pressing the T key very useful keyboard shortcut gets you a little bit of screen space back um, now the picture package option is here on the right hand side of the page you can see if we click on picture package we get basically a blank page you might see some photographs here on the page if you've got one of the if you've used this before if you've uh, chosen one of the templates in the template browser on the left here um, but uh, um, I've got a blank page and uh, we're going to just start off using this as basically as possible and then we'll take a look at some of the options so here in the right hand side about halfway down we've got the cells buttons and and these buttons allow us to drop an image onto the page. So let's choose the image we're working with. Let's choose that first image in the list there and click the 4x6 button. And you can see that adds a 4x6 print to this page. Simple enough so far, yeah? Now let's add another 25 x 35 and it adds that below. It's trying to use the space as efficiently as possible. Let's add two of those. And then let's say, for example, we want to make some images that would be uh, wallet size. So two by two and a half. And if I click that a couple of times, you can see what it's going to try and do here is it's going to try and lay these pictures out so that they're as space efficient as possible and also so that they produce as few cuts as possible. So when you're coming to cut these pictures out, it's trying to make it so that you don't have to do any more cuts than you absolutely need to. So it's a, an extremely useful layout algorithm. Now in this case that isn't what I want. I want to have three of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag that image across and it snaps to the edge of the one that's next to it. So I've now got room to add another one in next to that. So you can see that we can also lay these pictures out in the way we want. Um, now in this case I'm not sure I really want those ones in the middle so I'm going to hit uh, click on those and press the delete key to make them go away and let's say I want another 4 by 6 Well it's not put that where I'd really like so let's drag that back over onto here and let's use another feature in this option in uh, Lightroom 3 the auto layout button and you can see when I click that what it's done is it said ah okay um, I can lay that page out so that all the pictures you've dragged onto it will fit and it's done exactly that it's put us the two six by fours next to each other and moved those three wallet size photos down to fit in the space so we've got everything we want on the one page now I might look at that and think, well that's great, but there's no real headline image here. There's no eye-catching, very large image that, that I'm going to know that I know sells photographs. So what I want to do is add another page to this layout. I'm going to click the new page button. And I want to add as big an image as I can get away with. So 8 by 10. Now why isn't that working? Well the reason that button is not working is that I'm trying to work here on A4 pages. You can see it on the overlay here. It says paper A4 and 8 by 10 simply won't fit on the A4 page. So I can click a 5 by 7 and that picture is, it's not bad but it's not as big as I would like so I can click and drag 
the corners of that and fill the screen with it, fill the page with it. And now I've got my nice large headline image. And that would be the one that when I when I approach the customer with the, with the photographs nicely bagged up uh, behind cellophane, the one that I keep on the top is the big one, the one where they get to see a lovely, big, beautiful photograph of themselves looking looking fine in their glad rags, nicely made up, looking happy, with having good times with their friends. That's the photograph that sells the picture package. Now, um, just to address that question about the 8x10 button, what happens if we do want to put an 8x10 on here? Well, we can change the page size. If we open up this left panel here um, and click the Page Setup button, we'll get... Now, this is the version for the Mac. It doesn't look the same on the PC, but it lets you do the same things. So, um, here you can see I've got the option to choose a paper size, and I can choose A3 in there if I wish, and you can see that that will lay out the pages differently. And if I click on that one and delete it, I can now add an 8x10 and that will work nicely. Um, so that's how you would want to change your page size if you wished. Um, in this case I'd like to go back to A4 and I'm going to go back and re-add my full page image. There we go, that's my headline image and that's my front page image. Um, now let's just take a quick look through the options here because there's a few things we can do to, to tweak this and make it more our own. Um, first of all we've got this option here to zoom to fill and you can see if I turn that on and off what it's doing is we've defined some image cells and it's going to try and use the image cell as much as possible. Um, if I have zoom to fill turned off the image cell in this case is not quite the same ratio as the uh, the image that I'm putting in it. So we get a bit of extra white at the top and bottom. But if I say zoom to fill, it's going to zoom it up and crop a little off the sides of the image in order that it fills that space as much as possible. Sometimes that's what you want and sometimes it isn't. That's a, a problem for you to, to address with, with relation to your own images. Um, we've also got the option here to rotate to fit. Um, so if the image is a uh, you know, landscape format and we've made a, a portrait format hole for it as you can see here if you turn that option on it will rotate it so that it best fits in that in that space. Uh, we've also got a couple of options here to add a border and an inner stroke so if I turn that border on and off you can see what that's doing is it's adding a little bit of border around the edge and uh, we've also got an inner stroke option here if you look in the bottom right corner of the image you can see we've got a black line around the edge of the image that is actually printing that's that that will print when we come to print it out and if I turn the inner stroke option on and off you can see that that's turning that on and off and I can make that thicker or thinner if I wish um, that is simply there just to give a little classy line to the uh, to the image when it gets printed the thicker outer line that we're seeing is not a printing line that won't actually print let me show you here where we've got this show guides option we can turn all of the guides on and off if we wish with this tick box or we can turn on and off various individual options and the one that um, produces that black line around the edge there is image cells if I turn that off what it's showing us now is this is how it will actually print this is turning on uh, just something here in the interface that allows us to lay these images out better. Uh, we can also turn off the grid if we wish. We can turn off that representation of the non-printable bleed area. Um, we can also turn on and off the rulers at the top and the sides there. Um, and we can also turn on and off these little icons in the corners that are showing us how big the image that we've put on the page is going to be. I happen to like all of those turned on. Um, I think it helps you with your layout, and I think it's it's easy if you do want to see how the page is going to print, just to click the, the Show Guides button, and that's actually going to be what comes out of the printer. Right, that's us done for another week. Thank you very much for watching. Before we go, we've got time to say a massive thank you to our regular show sponsor, Angie's List. If you've got something that needs doing to your house, and let's face it, which of us doesn't have something, um, you need somebody that you can trust in your local area, preferably with a recommendation from somebody. That's exactly what Angie's List can give you. You can subscribe to Angie's List for a massive 25% discount by using our promo code PHOTO, and you will get access to their big body of user reviews from people just like you who have used people in your area. If you need somebody to do work on your house or your car or a healthcare professional, you can't go wrong. Sign up for Angie's List at angieslist.com and use our promo code PHOTO to get a 25% discount. Thanks very much to Angie's List for supporting the show. Okay, we're all done. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in part two of this tutorial next week. Bye-bye.
Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com